Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Forum of the Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Europe on Hannover Messe 2023. Welcome to our next uh, talk here on stage, which will be about Transhide. It's an uh, innovative hydrogen transport chain, chains uh, that we are talking about. I would like to welcome here on stage, uh, right next to me, seeing Huang. Uh, she's Senior Business Development Manager at Hydrogenius LOHC Technologies. Welcome here on stage. Thank and also a warm welcome to Dr. Michael Wolf from Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, Institute for Technical Physics. Not applied physics, but technical physics, it's important to say that. Indeed. Welcome here, uh, good to have you here. And we're talking about Transhide. And Transhide is a lead project of the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, and it's about the development of a transportation infrastructure for green hydrogen. As you all know, we have to import a lot of hydrogen. We will not be able to produce it all here uh, in, in Germany or in Europe. So we have to think about how to transport it uh, to Germany and Europe. So in four demonstration, even five demonstration projects, it will test and scale up for, for different transport technologies, which are high pressure vessels, uh, transport in existing gas pipelines, bound in ammonia, or transport by means of LOHC and liquid hydrogen. And the, the two la latest we will talk about, we can't cover everything, but we will talk about LOHC and we will talk about uh, liquid hydrogen. So whenever you have a question, just raise your hand. I'll be with the microphone right with you. Ms. Wang, let's start with LOHC. That stands yep. for Liquid Organic Hydrogen Carrier. In what specific applications is the transport technology uh, um, the, the best one, and how does it work? Please explain that to us. Well, um, first of all, um, in our opinion, the hydrogen market is growing very fast, and there will be a huge demand for hydrogen transport technologies. So we see um, a very much market potential for all technologies, but especially for our technology, um, LHC technology, so liquid organic hydrogen carrier, um, we see the technology will have a very important role, will play a key role in the future hydrogen market. And the reason is that we use an organic liquid, which is called benzitoluene. It's used today as a thermal oil. And with this liquid, we can chemically bound the, uh, combine the hydrogen with the liquid. So instead of transporting the hydrogen in gases form, we can transport the hydrogen in an organic liquid using existing fossil fuel infrastructure, especially under ambient conditions, which makes the handling of hydrogen much easier, much safer. And we can transport the hydrogen in very large quantity from, for example, um, MENA region to Europe using the existing vessels that is available and then um, release the hydrogen in hub, in port, or at the off-taker site directly. Uh, to, to understand that correctly, so you have a liquid which is organic mm -hmm. and it takes hydrogen. But then when you transport the hydrogen, you, don't, you not only transport the hydrogen, also the li liquid. Wouldn't that be much more in the end? Um, no, it's actually the, the key, the unique selling point of this technology because we all know that hydrogen is a very, um, let's say, special um, gas that, can, that needs a lot of attention, a lot of um, safety requirements, very high safety requirements. But with our um, liquid uh, carrier, we can um, Combine, we can transport the hydrogen under ambient conditions, so no high pressure, no low temperature required. The liquid itself is hardly flammable, so it means that hydrogen from, uh, is transferred from an explosive gas into a non-flammable um, uh, liquid. And um, we have a booth here on the right side of the stage. If you are interested, you can go over there and have a look at our liquid. And they are stored in two um, bottles, which you can really shake with your hands and without anything happens. Ms. Huang, uh, in, in one liter of LOHC, how much hydrogen goes into it? Well, uh, in one cubic meter liquid, High, uh, liquid carrier, we can carry about four, uh, 55 kilogram hydrogen. So we have a weight percentage uh, about 6.23%. 
That's pretty good. Okay, so if we produce hydrogen somewhere, let's say on Helgoland, mm -hmm. uh, just for an example, uh, and then and we want to carry it to, to the port of Hamburg, then uh, we have to carry it, and then LOHC could be a, a, a good way to do it. Um, of course, um, we in the Transhide project, we simulate a, a hydrogen supply chain from Hegeland to, to Hamburg using ship, using container sh uh, vessels, using tank ves tankers, for example, just to demonstrate that um, uh, transporting LHC uh, uh, transporting hydrogen using the LHC technology uh, by ship can be also feasible, can be also very easily done, and also to demonstrate that, to show that um, our technology can be also used in um, regions where the um, conditions are very uh, special, like uh, limited space, like uh, very near to the to tourist, uh, tourist uh, area, like um, so this such kind of conditions. And Helgoland is a tourist area, we have exactly, to say. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but but when, you, when you put the hydrogen into the LOHC, it produces heat. It, it's a chemical process. Yes. What do you do with the heat? Well, we... Um, in the case we analyze in trans height, we actually um, analyze the uh, feasibility to fit the heat into a district heating network on the uh, island Hegolan. So to also help the island, uh, the island to, to decarbonize their um, district heating network. And the feasibility study shows that this is very um, easy, can be very easily done, so um, it's, we were very happy with, with so the, the result. So inha the inhabitants of Helgoland and all the tourists and also the swimming pool there can be heated by ta just taking the, the hydrogen into the LOHC. Once you come to the port of Hamburg, yep. you have to release the hydrogen again, and then you need heat, even more heat than you released uh, in Helgoland. Where do you get it from? Um, first of all, the heat uh, amount that we need is sim uh, very similar, uh, like the amount that we can produce in Hegoland or in uh, near the production hydrogen production site. And um, in Hamburg, we also thought, um, for the location Hamburg, we also conducted a feasibility study, also in the framework of Kranzheit. And in this feasibility study, we investigated um, different potential. Um, heat sources in the, in the uh, location Hamburg, and we actually identified a very good heat source for our um, dehydrogenation um, process. And um, that's how we would like to increase also the total efficiency with the other um, industrial processes. OK, that could work. And I have, I've had a workshop last uh, um, autumn in, in Hamburg with Ireland and Scotland. They say we produce a lot of uh, amount of, of green hydrogen. We would like to transport to Germany. Uh, that would be also a nice means, wasn't it, wouldn't it? Yes, yes. That would be also um, a very um, attractive um, use case for our technology. And um, especially when we consider that in sh um, Shotland, in, in Scotland, in Iran, there is so much um, oil farm existing that can be also um, reused by our technology in the future. Very nice technology is worth looking at it, and that's what you do in Transhide in this project uh, funded by the Federal Ministry uh, of Science. Um, so, Dr. Wolf, also your project is, is funded there, and we talk about liquid hydrogen. Well, this is no rocket science. We, we, we've been to the moon with liquid hydrogen already. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, but uh, liquid hydrogen it can also become uh, an important uh, player for the energy transition. Um, within the project Transhide, actually, we are focusing on the entire chain from the liquefaction process itself until the uh, application. And uh, along, if you take the uh, process chain as a whole, then you start with the liquefaction. But you have to address also efficient transport, efficient storage, and uh, the most suited uh, applications that can make use of the properties of liquid hydrogen, uh, yeah, the specific properties of liquid hydrogen in particular. I've heard the word efficient. What about efficiency? If you liquefy hydrogen, you lose a third of the hydrogen, uh, of the energy, uh, don't you? That's correct. Uh, but on the one hand, that's the present value of existing liquefiers. There are studies that show that it's possible to, inc to decrease the amount of uh, electric energy that you need to liquefy a certain amount of hydrogen substantially, from about one third to about a fourth or a fifth of the, uh, um, yeah, the, the energy content. 
On the other hand, there is also the, the potential by doing this by scaling up liquefaction processes. At the moment, the largest uh, plant in Germany produces five tons per day. And uh, nothing, we, you could say. Related to the quantities that we need uh, to use liquid hydrogen, for example, uh, as a fuel for mobile applications, that's really uh, not much. And you save a lot of energy if you have to carry it around the globe, like, say, from Australia or from Canada uh, to import liquid hydrogen. Uh, uh, will take a lot of energy to bring it here. So if you get more hydrogen because it's liquefied, uh, you save also. The, uh, one of the specific uh, yeah, unique properties of uh, liquid hydrogen are that it has a very high volumetric uh, and, en uh, and gravimetric energy density. And therefore, you could import it, uh, for example, by ship to Germany. And we expect that uh, Germany will be a net energy importer. Therefore, ways to import uh, hydrogen, for example, in liquid way, would be uh, highly uh, welcome and uh, needed. But liquid hydrogen is uh, as cool as minus 253 degrees, uh, which is very cool, near to, to zero Kelvin or one Kelvin. Uh, so um, you always have a boil off, especially if, if you have a long way from Australia or from, from Canada to Germany. What do you do with the boil off gas? Well, if we stick to the application of the ship, one idea could be, for example, to use it directly for the propulsion of the ship itself. That only works for one way, the, not the other way back. Um, actually, you should never let the, uh, the system um, yeah, uh, empty completely because you won't like to keep your storage tank cool. Uh, otherwise, you lose lots, uh, lots of uh, energy when you transfer liquid hydrogen into a warm tank once again. Ah, interesting. I, I learned something. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, but on the other hand, I mean, uh, if you have, for example, uh, a stationary tank, uh, within the project, we are investigating ways to improve the, uh, yeah, the, the storage ca uh, capacity and within the, uh, of, a, of a system, for example, to reduce boil off uh, with new uh, approaches, reliquification, re uh, uh, that's one of the aspects that we are addressing there. Dr. Wolf, uh, once the, the liquid hydrogen comes to the port, will we make it uh, compressed again after that to get it into a pipeline or keep it liquid for some use cases? What use cases could that be? I think from an efficiency point of view, it's always best if you have it already in a liquid state, for example, for uh, transport, uh, to look into applications that require liquid hydrogen in the future, for example, as a fuel. Aviation could play an important role. And uh, therefore, once it's liquid, it's also yeah, uh, beneficial to transport it in liquid form to the, uh, to the customer that leads it once again in, uh, in a liquid way. <laughs> So liquid hydrogen could uh, be tanked in an, an airplane to fly to United States, for instance, and you can have a shower at, at, uh, at the plane because there's coming so much water out of it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you use the hydrogen, it combines with oxygen and gets water. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very nice. So uh, there's one application which is in the far future, of course, but which is very interesting, and you're doing research on that as well, which is... Uh, 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 a liquid hydrogen pipeline combined with a semiconductor which has to be cooled very, very deeply. So that would be very clever, both together. Yeah, actually, it's, uh, the material that is used there is a superconductor. And uh, the specific property of a superconductor, actually, it's not limited to energy transport. Superconductors could also be used, for example, in bearings, could be used as a conductor for uh, motors. But in this specific application that you are addressing, uh, it's about using a superconducting material, a material without electric resistance, to transport substantial amounts of uh, electric energy, we're talking here about gigawatts, in a very efficient and compact way combined with a liquid hydrogen pipeline. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question to one of my participants here on stage, just raise your hand. You can ask your question right away. I still have a few questions, so uh, I would like to know from uh, you, Ms. Huang, and the, this cooperation, it's not by instance that we, we put you on the, sta on, on the chair as a, a representative of the industry and uh, Mr. Wolf uh, as a re representative of science. The cooperation between industry, science, startups, uh, SMEs, how does it work in this project, Transheid? 
um, I think it works very, very good. Um, in Chance High, for example, we have our um, uh, scientific partner, um, Fraunhofer um, eFarm. So uh, they are working on the, let's say, the innovative materials that they that can be used in the future for um, LHC tanks, for example, to reduce the, the production cost for tanks and so on. And how to, um, they are also developing like, um, um, drones how to, how to, um, over to um, control the quality of the tanks, for example, during um, the operation. So um, I think the cooperation in our um, project uh, is very good, and we have also very close connection to um, with other research partners in Transheide. For example, we work together um, uh, with other partners in the um, Norm uh, Verbund. Uh, so um, it's about um, standardize um, the hydrogen transport technologies. Um, um, so I think it's a very good uh, program for industrial companies and also scientific um, institutes to work together. And Dr. Wolf, when you're doing research on a certain transport carrier of uh, hydrogen and find out, well, liquid hydrogen is just the, uh, uh, the answer, we don't need any LOHC, will you tell her or not? <laughs> I'm convinced that uh, the amount of, uh, of hydrogen that we will be needing uh, to really master the energy transition and the variety of applications where hydrogen is used is actually that big that we will need for the specific applications the proper answer and liquid hydrogen will certainly in my opinion have an important uh, contribution in particular for mobility or for importing large amounts of, uh, of liquid hydrogen but there are other technologies gaseous hydrogen LOHC ammonia that are also really relevant and needed to accomplish the energy transition. So there's no competition. Uh, the program is uh, technology open, of course. Ms. Wang, uh, last question to you. Could you also imagine that one day we don't release the hydrogen from the LOHC, but only in the, in the cars, for instance, passenger cars, we just tank LOHC and release this within the passenger cars? Um, yes, we are actually, um, so it's um, uh, in other pro uh, projects, we are actually working together with um, scientific partners and also um, industrial partners like Scheffler. Um, we have just, uh, we closed a cooperation with Scheffler, for example, last year, and it's about development of a high, um, LHC direct fuel cell, which means you only put LHC into a fuel cell and what you get at the end is the electricity directly. Such kind of um, technology can, of course, it, be used in passenger vehicles in the future. And, and then we co need a complete new infrastructure, don't we? Well, you can still use the fueling station like today, the um, fossil fuel fueling yeah, station. That's correct, yeah. But you need two, you know, to, to pump off the, the old LOAC and, and uh, give the new one on. But this yeah. is another discussion. This is will be a small, <laughs> uh, small question that uh, has to be uh, done by uh, smart logistic companies, but I think that will not be the major issue. Thank you very much, Ms. Wang. Thank you very much, Dr. Wolf. It was a pleasure talking to you. Highly interesting projects you're working on. It's all uh, within Transhide from the Federal Ministry of Science and Research. And uh, I'm happy to have you here on stage. Thank you very much once again. And thank you, the audience, for your attention. Thank you.